The following program, The Russ Belleville Show, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on The Russ Belleville Show are their own and the Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry reliability. it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! From the promise of legalization. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. I hear you. You had a question for me. Now, here's your host, Radical Russ Belleville. <laughs> So welcome, it is Thursday, September 26, 2013, and it's got to be 420 summer in the world. We're also doing it live here at Brightside in Portland, Oregon, 1010 Southeast Powell, the newest and best dispensary opening up here in Portland. Check out the Southeast here, 1010. You can find a Brightside PDX on Instagram and Twitter, or just plain old Brightside on Facebook. And <laughs> I think a little kooky here. Uh, just as I was going on the air, the tripod was falling down. The microphones weren't working uh, in a little bit of a panic. But we're going to have a great show today. We've got a couple of friends of the show who, you know, have now evolved beyond our little 420 radio to become the uh, the owner operator and one of the, what was it, patient counselors intake Ah, they got some name for it. Anyway, Calico Castile, our own friend Wiz Calico, our former intern here at 420 Radio and the Russ Belleville Show, uh, he will be speaking with us at half past. We'll also speak with Todd Armstrong, our good friend, the comedian, who is also working here at Brightside. We'll ask about uh, the hassles involved in getting you know, their opening here and uh, the expansion and the future they're looking forward to here, uh, serving the patients of Portland and the surrounding areas. And so um, come on down here. The first five people, first five patients who come in for some medicine to today, with your medicine, you will get a Russ Belleville Show pin. We'll get you a free pin there. So check that out. 1010 Southeast Powell here in Portland, Oregon. Now, on today's show, we got all sorts of interesting stuff. Bago Schwago will be calling in a little bit later because today is Groovin' Thursday and he's got a great tune for us today. We'll talk a little bit about that at 20 after. In our Behind the Headlines segment, we're going to take a look at what I call the drug testing epidemic and all the different ways the drug and alcohol testing industry is lobbying to make more money by seizing your pee. Also on the show today, we are going to get into some controversy. You know, I'm writing a, a daily column. It's not really a column, but daily articles for High Times Magazine. And I wrote one called The Top 5 Pro Pot Myths That Must Be Busted. And it's generating a whole lot of uh, comments and controversy uh, in the comments section. I'll take some time to address that today in the Radical Rant. But before we get to all of that, of course, we got our 420 Radio News. we got a new poll coming out of California on marijuana legalization. we got some of the leaders in Mexico calling for decriminalization and legalization. We'll tell you all about it right after We'll be right back Go after around. these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Is there anyone out there who still isn't clear about what doing drugs does? Okay, last time. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. 
Any questions? This is your 420 Radio News for Thursday, September 26, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Prominent Mexicans urge government to decriminalize marijuana. This from Reuters.com. A broad spectrum of prominent Mexicans, including former ministers, businessmen, artists, and a Nobel Prize winning scientist on Wednesday, urged the government to decriminalize marijuana in a bid to curb gang violence and corruption. Since 2007, about 80,000 people have been killed in turf wars between drug cartels and their clashes with security forces, leading to calls for a change in policy in Mexico and elsewhere in the U.S.-led war on drugs. Among the signatories were several former ministers from the ruling Institutional Revolutionary Party, famous actors, media tycoon Ricardo Salinas Pliego, one of Mexico's richest men, and 1995 Nobel laureate for chemistry Mario Molina. The ad argued that criminalization made narcotics more lucrative for cartels, noted that a number of U.S. states had liberalized marijuana laws, and that Uruguay's Congress was taking steps to legalize the cultivation and sale of the drug. The advertisement read, quote, Mexico has paid a high cost for applying the punitive policy of prohibition, end quote. Up in smoke, 52% of California adults want to legalize marijuana from the New York Daily News. Support for the legalization of marijuana has never been so high in the Golden State. 52% of adults surveyed by the Public Policy Institute of California said they thought marijuana should be made legal in the state, a new record level since the group began polling residents. Mirroring nationwide trends, a clear majority of Californians said that the U.S. Department of Justice should not enforce federal marijuana laws in states that have voted to legalize its use for either medicinal or recreational purposes. Of those surveyed, 61% of adults and 68% of likely voters said that Uncle Sam should let state marijuana laws stand, even if they are in conflict with the federal prohibition. Capital Alert, ballot proposal to decriminalize pot cleared to collect signatures from the Sacramento Bee. As a new poll finds that a majority of California voters back legalizing marijuana, Proponents of a ballot proposal to decriminalize cannabis have the green light to collect signatures to put it on the 2014 ballot. The ballot initiative, which, quote, decriminalizes marijuana and hemp use, possession, cultivation, transportation, or distribution, end quote, has been cleared for circulation, the Secretary of State's office announced Thursday. In addition, the proposal would institute case-by-case -case reviews of nonviolent marijuana convictions and charges, it would also have the legislature enact laws to tax and regulate the plant, allow doctors to prescribe pot regardless of a patient's age, and ban state or local governments from enforcing federal marijuana law. This particular initiative looks less professional than past efforts. The cover note is written by hand and contains an email address, but no phone number for one of its backers, Burton Doozy of Simi Valley. Bank of America will accept Washington State marijuana revenue from the 420times.com. One of the biggest hurdles that companies generating revenue in the marijuana industry have to face is finding a financial institution willing to accept them as customers. The Liquor Control Board in the state of Washington was in the same situation until the Bank of America agreed to permit them to deposit anticipated marijuana-related profits in their vaults. Most banks are leery of dealing with marijuana businesses simply for the fact that under federal policy, the government views money from marijuana transactions as money laundering. Bank of America declares it is willing to accommodate new marijuana-related businesses, according to Jim McIntyre, treasurer for the state of Washington, who said, quote, I mean, in fact, we're already taking some tax revenues, I believe, for medical marijuana, so it's not a real issue in terms of their perception, end quote. Colorado marijuana industry gets $1 million from Investor Group from Huffington Post. In Denver, more than 60 investors from the Art Group ArcView Group met with 22 startup marijuana companies, including several directly involved in marijuana sales or cultivation, which was a first for the investment group, seeking capital. By the end of the meetings, the investors committed well over $1 million to Colorado marijuana companies, ArcView CEO Troy Dayton told the Denver Post. And it may have been even more. However, due to Colorado's marijuana laws, which requires investors to qualify as state residents for three years before making equity investments in a marijuana business, some investors had...
This has been your 420 Radio News for Thursday, September 26, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines and take a look at the drug testing epidemic. We are live here from Brightside Dispensary in Portland, Oregon at Brightside PDX or Brightside on Facebook. You're listening to the Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel produces quality custom designs for t-shirts, hats, and other apparel. Handmade Apparel is the official design shop for 420 Radio, The Russ Belvel Show, Ganja John, and Cascadia Concentrates, among many clients who rely on Adam Hand for everything from short-run custom projects to full-run clothing lines. Adam's meticulous designs are individually crafted and screened in vibrant high-definition color. Visit handmadeapparel.biz to browse the selection of handmade gear or to get a personal quote for your own designs. Handmade Apparel, a proud supporter of 420radio.org. Marijuana is harmless. That's what everybody says these days. It's fun. It's recreational. Some even call it medicine. But every year, millions of young people find out that marijuana is extremely dangerous. Every year they find out that it's deadly. Marijuana smoke is lethal and toxic. Don't believe anything you've ever heard positive about smoking marijuana. It will kill you. Really. It's really going to kill you. It's, don't, don't, don't smoke it. It will really, really kill you. Seriously. It's going to kill you. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after a word from these 420 friendly sponsors. Wait a minute. This is Internet Radio. There are no dials here. Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And today we are talking about the drug testing epidemic. This was once sold as a public safety measure, but drug testing now serves to enforce social disapproval of cannabis use, enrich drug testing industries, inflate drug rehab statistics, and indoctrinate children into a culture of surveillance and control. In Pennsylvania, Christopher McDougall's 11-year-old daughter was barred from joining the school orchestra. The reason? He would not allow the school district to collect a cup of his child's urine to test for drug metabolites. The ACLU has sued Pennsylvania since a 2003 state Supreme Court decision requires there be some specific assumption that school kids are engaged in drug activity. And nobody seems to think the swift middle school orchestra in central Pennsylvania is producing the next Tony Montana, Heisenberg, or Pablo Escobar among its crop of sixth graders. But that hasn't stopped the school from requiring any child, any child who wishes to participate in extracurricular activities to submit to the whiz quiz. Seizing the urine from children who merely wish to participate in a school activity like band or chess club is a far cry from the original justification we were given to surrender our Fourth Amendment rights to our employers. It was sold to us in the late 1980s as an instrument of public safety following a well-publicized 1987 train crash in Baltimore where the Amtrak engineer killed in the accident tested positive for marijuana. 
The 1988 Drug-Free Workplace Act provided the impetus for employers to begin voluntary, suspicionless testing of potential new hires and voluntary random testing of current workers, where voluntary means if you want to be employed. By 1991, Congress authorized mandatory drug testing for anyone involved in a safety-sensitive job covered by the Department of Transportation, an agency which to this day maintains that a positive marijuana test tells us nothing about whether a pilot, driver, or conductor is high on the job. By 1995, the Vernonia School District in Oregon had implemented drug testing for all high school and junior high athletes, citing the need for student safety in potentially risky athletic competitions. The Supreme Court upheld the district's right to test kids, even though the drug epidemic Vernonia cited as their justification consisted of 12 positive tests over more than four years. Now, over a series of court rulings, schools are free to impose drug testing on students as young as 11 for participation in anything beyond just attending class. Some high schools even require drug tests to get a permit for parking at school. This drug testing business is a profitable one. Exact figures are tough to calculate, but the drug testing industry is easily a multi-billion dollar operation. The Drug and Alcohol Testing Industry Association, or DADIA, represents some 1,200 drug testing companies and retains a lobbying firm in Washington, D.C. Having convinced most employers and many schools to use their drug testing products, the lobbyists from DADIA and other industry supporters are now targeting state governments. They're spending hundreds of thousands of lobbying dollars to convince lawmakers to require drug testing for most forms of public assistance. Where these programs are already in place, states find they spend more taxpayer dollars on drug testing than the money they supposedly saved by denying benefits to those who failed the test. And they also find that poor people fail the test less often than the general public. And recently, there have also been well-publicized cases of mismanagement and malfeasance at drug testing laboratories. One Boston drug testing lab was run by a woman alleged to have tampered with and outright faked drug test results in cases that could involve more than 40,000 defendants over her nine-year employment. In Houston, nearly 5,000 convictions could have been affected by a crime lab tech who faked test results. In San Francisco, one drug testing lab was ordered closed after an employee was caught skimming painkillers and cocaine from evidence for herself. Drug testing is also the linchpin of this new, kinder, gentler drug war strategy promoted by Kevin Sabet and Project Sam, the misnamed Smart Approaches to Marijuana. Sam promotes the use of so-called drug courts, which, which have expanded from a dozen or so in the beginning of the 1990s to over 2,700 today. They're to evaluate marijuana users caught by police for the choice of prison or drug rehab. In these rehabs, pot smokers are drug tested with the threat of going to prison if they test positive. So it's no wonder that so many of these addicts then successfully complete their drug court ordered program. With a great number of pot smokers making up the population of drug rehabs, their successful treatment then boosts the success rate statistics of both the rehabs and the drug courts. Now the drug testing industry can point to those figures as a selling point for more drug testing. You know, 50 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed that one day his children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I doubt he envisioned that someday his grandchildren's eligibility for employment and his great-grandchildren's fitness for playing violin at school would be judged by the content of their urine. So our look at behind the headlines, and that will be appearing in a future edition of High Times Magazine. So uh, take a look for that in the future. We are live here at Brightside Dispensary in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Wiz Calico, our former former uh, co-host here on the Russ Belleville Show, is the owner-operator of Brightside. We'll be talking to him at half past the hour, as well as Todd Armstrong, the comedian uh, who appeared on our show many times. He's working here as a patient consultant, so he will uh, tell us all about what they have here at the Bright Side. And uh, we'll take a look here real briefly. I'll show you a little bit of what is in store. These are from the Sativa category at Bright Side. This is a nice silver tip, which is a granddaddy perp with a super silver haze cross. And uh, that is uh, testing out at 26%. THC, their highest uh, test there. 
So we got to take a break, and um, I think silver tip is our break today. Hope you're having a good time from our live remote here at the Bright Side PDX. We'll be right back. Stick around. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that repo man. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Big Daddy Thinks. Funky Roller Ring, Roller Ring. Here at the Funky Roller Rink, it's always cool. They call me cool. Cause I got more glide in my stride and more dip in my hip. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Fun, fun. And I wear a mean dark pair of shades. And you can't see my eyes unless my head is bent. No time. Give me five. They call me cool. Mr. Cool. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Toker Tunes, the best in Pod Save 420 music from around the web. Today is Groovin' Thursday, featuring rap, hip-hop, soul, and funk music. You can get downloads and more information about all our daily Tucker tunes by visiting music.radicalrust.com. Now, sit back and enjoy your daily Tucker tunes. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are live here at Brightside in Portland, just returning from our 20 after break. And I hope we've got Bago Swaggo on the line. We're a little uh, janky here up in the remotes. But uh, how you doing there, Bago? Are you there? I'm doing good. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you just fine here, uh, connecting from our laptop instead of the home studio. So I'm never quite sure how it's going to turn out. But uh, how are things in Arizona? Things are going good. It's finally getting below 100 degrees, so that's nice. It's uh, it, it, <laughs> I can't complain. You know, it's not quite as sweaty. I mean, still a little bit, but <laughs> not quite it's tolerable. As, well, that's good to hear. I, I'm so glad to hear that. And, uh, you know, as we get into these winter months, it makes it even that more tempting for me to come visit you. You should. You should definitely come because that's when it's good is during the winter months. That's when you got to come down here, sir. I will do that. Hey, uh, tell us about the uh, artists that we got for today and a little bit about this tune. Sure. Well, actually, this song was submitted by one of our friends in the chat room, uh, Ms. Sharon with Moms for Marijuana. She submitted this a few months ago. I've just kind of had it sitting there in my mail, and I kind of went through them today, and I found it. And it's a very unique song. It goes from one kind of flow to another to back. It's very interesting when we play it. And I got a hold of the guy on Facebook. His name's Adam Cadman. Um, and uh, he wanted to say to let people know uh, that he is a, quite an activist and has spent his fair share of time fighting for his rights uh, and the legal system on the issue. Uh, he has a few songs about cannabis and legality, but Just Trees is a song created to give a vibe that cannabis is safe, relaxing, and uplifting. Uh, other friends of his are on harder drugs, but not him. I'm content on Just Trees. And he just wanted to put that, and he also wanted to say that he just got signed by a record label that I guess was one of the ones that helped Nicki Minaj get where she is. So he hopes to get bigger and be able to speak and, and reach a larger crowd about the trees. So. Well, good luck on that. We sure hope for it. What was the artist's name again? His name's Adam Cadman, and the song is called Just Trees. I think it's Cadman, Cadman. I'm not sure. 
All right, Adam Cadman with Just Trees. Thank you so much, Bagos Ragger, for calling in. We'll get that song going here in just a second. We are live here from Brightside PDX in Portland. It's 1010 Southeast Powell, and the first five patients to come in for medicine today get a free Russ Belville Show pin, so check that out. If you'd like your Russ Belville Show pin, all you got to do is go online to 420radio.org, look for the little button that says Shop, and look for all our releases. This is Adam Cadman. Just All of my boys are geeking out, some of them are rolling a blow, but you're not me. I'm on just we, we. There's a party in the south, you can tell we're in the MIA. We are God. K2 and that synthetic shit We on some better shit It stays purpler than Laker uniforms Greener than the Celtics is One with the earth like this We raise our hands and we call upon a storm Lighter than Freemasons is You wanna taste the hit We hot boxing with towels by the door we high boxing with towers by the hip Getting high all day, all night Till the sunrise, we be flying high with the red eyes Feeling cool, yeah, we feeling alright Yo, the feeling can't explain If you knock it, then I guess you lame But you cool, you entitled to your right Yo, we too relaxed to fight past the light Let me fire these trees, trees, trees Just trees Just trees To the sunrise, we be staying high with the red eyes. Feeling cool, yeah, we feeling alright. Yo, the feeling can't explain. If you knock it, then I guess you lame. But you cool, you entitled to your right. Yo, we too relaxed to fight past the light. Let me fire these trees. Just trees. Just trees. Hi, this is Willie Nelson, and I need your help. Alcohol prohibition didn't work in the 20s, and marijuana prohibition isn't working today. It's time we stop arresting law-abiding citizens because they prefer marijuana over alcohol. Nearly 2,000 Americans are arrested every day on marijuana charges. We're unfairly destroying the lives and careers of hundreds of thousands of people each year simply because they smoke marijuana. These are not criminals, they're average citizens like you, good neighbors who work hard, raise families, pay taxes, and contribute to their communities. We need your help to end marijuana prohibition once and for all. It's the fair thing to do. For more information, contact Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Call toll-free 888-67-NORML or visit their website at norml.org. The cannabis community includes a diverse set of activists and nonprofits working to end the prohibition of marijuana. We take the time to hear the stories of reform on the Russ Belleville Show's Cannabis Community Chat.
Welcome back, everybody. Half past the hour here, and joining us at Brightside Dispensary, we have the operator owner of Brightside, Calico Castile, and one of the I don't know what patient. We're calling them patient advisors here, yeah, Brightside. Advisors. Yeah, I'm that. Okay, so we got a patient advisor, Todd Armstrong. Yes. How you doing, guys? Excellent. Yourself? Fantastic. Great to be yeah. here. It's nice to be at the uh, building finally. I know uh, been a lot of hassles that you tried to put the building together, right? Well, I mean, you know, it was an eight-week process. Uh, we signed our lease on July 25th, and we opened yesterday, September the 25th. So, you know, it was like an eight-week construction uh, project that we managed to get done and managed to get open. I wouldn't say it was uh, too hectic of a process. I think it, being able to pull it off in eight weeks, I'm certainly proud of our ability to do that, having to construct it all, get everything permitted through the city, you know, trying to do everything above board, obviously trying to raise the bar here in the cannabis industry and uh, trying to do everything professionally and above board. So <clears throat> so we don't have people knocking on our doors for, for any uh, reasons that would uh, get us in trouble. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, speaking of that, Oregon just passed a dispensary law. Uh, the House bill, was it 3460? 3460. It just right. passed, but... Uh, you know, where are we timeline wise? I mean, is this a little premature? Is it actually oh, licensable sure. yet? Right, sure. So technically the licensing won't happen until March 2014. That's when the, the law will actually go into effect. That's when the rules and regulations from the Oregon Health Authority will be put out. But currently in the Multnomah County, there are, um, you know, upwards of at least 50 dispensaries um, operating currently. And they're basically operating under the idea that the district attorney here in the county said that they're not going to prosecute as long as they're not. Um, selling over state lines, selling to people without cards, or selling to minors. And obviously, we're going to be, you know, completely legitimate and above board. We plan on making sure that everybody's properly uh, carded and identified before coming in. We have, you know, a lot of security here at the spot that we're planning on, or that we do have implemented, but that I think is going to become a standard. So, um, you know, we're definitely going to be trying to push forward the, the professional side of things. So you're basically operating as if, you know, 3460 was in effect right now. Right, sure. As if it was in effect right now, we're going to try to um, be in a position so that when the rules and regulations come around in March, we're easily able to uh, to uh, obtain our licensing. So we definitely wanted to be able to get the ground um hit the ground running here in Multnomah County since we're, you know, have at least a little bit of leeway in order to operate. That way we can uh, have things buttoned up, work out all the kinks and all the bugs, um, you know, prior to March. So what aspects of putting this together were new to you? Uh, everything, I would say, <laughs> probably. I mean, I went What was from, harder than you expected? Uh, it was, it was, it was, um... It was a little bit tougher than I expected. I'd been working on a business plan for a few months prior to uh, landing this opportunity. And so, I mean, I certainly had one set of ideas about how money was going to be spent or how that was going to work out in the construction timeline. But obviously, you know, you get in here and you start trying to get contractors in here the end of summer when construction uh, season's pretty busy and it's tough to get people in here. So, I mean, it was definitely... Um, you know, I had to harken back to my old student government days from high school, like putting on <laughs> ASB and food drives, things like those nature, because it really was just a big project that I had to get everything lined up for and everything had to be firing, you know, at, uh, at, any, at any given moment at the right time. So, All right. Well, let's, let's talk to Todd for a second yeah. here, because we know you as Todd Armstrong, comedian, yes. and now you're Todd Armstrong, patient counselor. Advisor. Advisor. Yes, because Bud Tender just sounds too cheesy. So. <laughs> too cheesy? So uh, what will you be advising the patients upon. I mean, uh, let's look at this. We got some. We got some bright side uh, examples here, and this here I understand is Rocco's Wonder. So, yes. if the patients coming in for some Rocco's Wonder, what are you going to advise? Uh, that is our house blend. Uh, that is a, a fabulous blend of, uh, as I remember, it is Neville's Haze and Cinderella ninety nine. So it's a nice uh, up sativa, good motivation for if you're uh, looking for some daytime medicine. Uh, I it's a personal favorite. A lot of folks that want something to do instead of just sit on the couch. But if you need that, we have plenty of indicas as well. It sure is pretty. Yes. All right. So everything take... we have is soil grown. It's organic as well. So uh, coming from my own personal family need for a quality organic medicine, that's why I'm here. Well, here we have a Narnia. Yes, another okay. house blend of ours. Fabulous. Uh, that's 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 a a huge huge favorite around. Uh, that's actually skunk number one with the Cinderella ninety nine as well. So Cinderella ninety nine is a good uh, female for our breeders to use and. Now, I understand uh, each of these uh, sativas we were looking at, or sativa doms we were looking at, was yeah. over 20% THC. We have a silver tip here, which yes. I understand is your, your winner. I would say our flagship, absolutely, 26.2%, uh, multiple cannabinoids, THCV, CBD, CBN. Uh, yes, uh, and that is a combination of the granddaddy perp with the, uh, the super silver haze. That's out of Montana originally. Mm. 
Uh, that's actually featured in this month's uh, Canna issue, I believe. A Cannabis Now issue, and uh, right there next to the Blue Dreams, we have that in stock. And that's yes, really- I, I understand that Silver Tip Bud was bigger when it was first brought in here. <laughs> I don't know be- what happened to it. <laughs> it's all accounted for. It's all in the system. <laughs> it's all in the Every system. Every single gram. Yeah, so th- tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I see uh, a bio track. I mean, you got to do all sorts of software, all sorts yeah. of things. Click has been up with that. I've been pretty impressed with it since of uh, our POS system. I mean, it's it, it tracks all the inventory, what we have, what we have coming up, and even tracks what a, a, a patient's previous likes were. So if they're a, a, sativa, a sativa purchaser, we can see that, make recommendations for them, and also uh, inform them of what's coming around in the next few weeks that, that's being cured and dried. Fantastic. Hey, uh, folks, if you want to learn more about Brightside, you can check them out on Facebook. It's just Brightside on Facebook. It's Brightside PDX on Twitter and Instagram. Do you have a, a website website? Uh, brightsidepdx.org. Well, that fits out just perfectly. Now, the folks in the chat room are saying, hey, give us a tour, give us a tour. Folks, I've taken some video, and we'll do the video tour, but uh, I have learned the hard way that trying to run videos on the remote is just about impossible. So I say open up a second window, go like us on Facebook right now and see every pitch you'd ever want. And listen and never miss a beat of this fabulous baritone voice right here. That's right. And so you can just go like Brightside on Facebook right now. Look through the galleries, look through the photos. Do you have, uh, going to get some YouTube videos up maybe? You know, we do have a YouTube channel. I just haven't thrown any videos up there. We definitely need to get, we'll get a tour video going here very soon. Uh, like I said, we just opened yesterday. So there are a lot of things we plan on rolling out here in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so when we, yeah, we'll be able to be found on Weed Maps and Leafly here, hopefully by um, next week. So a lot of things will be rolling out. You'll definitely be able to find us on all of the, all of the social media, all of the possible locations where you can you can find a dispenser, you will be able to find Brightside PDX. For and sure. that's that's this video here. We'll, we can put up on that. No, uh, absolutely. Side this as well. might actually. I guess this could be the the introduction video into the YouTube this account for Brightside PDX. Model onto the interwebs. Yeah, there we go. So let's tell the folks that are watching the video if they want to become patients at Brightside. What's the process that's involved? Sure. Well, um, you know, currently we don't have we're not doing a clinic or we don't have any doctors on staff. But you know, there are medical marijuana clinics in Portland, very, very many of them. You can check them out on Weed Maps. And uh, you just have to be able to take your patient records to a pot-friendly doctor. Basically, what I usually recommend my family members to do is go to their personal doctor, receive their their medical records, then go to one of these clinics. They will verify that you qualify under the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program as long as you have one of the qualifying conditions. And then the doctor will then write you a recommendation. You send off the filing fee to the state, and they'll send you your card out in just a few in you know a few weeks. So, I mean, it's definitely one of those things where um, you just got to be able to get your own personal you know records from your doctor if it's not something you're comfortable talking to your personal doctor about. All you got to do is just get your records, say that you're applying for insurance or something, then go take that to one of these um, friendly clinics, and they'll be able to to get you your recommendation. Now, we saw a, a bunch of great flour that you've got here at Brightside, and patients now, of course, are demanding shatter and oils. How are you stocked on that? Yeah, so we definitely, right now, we're carrying some silver tip um, hash oil, some BHO, uh, obviously made from our like highest um, THC strain. Uh, we're in the process of getting that tested. All of our flowers have been tested here at the store. We're in the process of waiting for our results for our concentrates, but we know that if it was testing at 26, that obviously the, the silver tip uh, oil is going to be doing pretty decent. Um, we're planning on having many more strains next week, like I said, just opening yesterday. We did a pretty bare bones rollout, really soft open um, with most of our basic strains, but in the coming days, we're going to be having edibles, tinctures, salves, um, RSO. We'll have the whole gamut of everything you can think of, all of the possible um, ways you can medicate using cannabis. We plan on carrying here at Brightside and definitely have the highest quality we can get our hands on. So we're definitely working towards that to make sure that we're working with suppliers and producers that we can trust and that we know are going to give high quality medicine to our patients. Well, there's a, like you said, there was a, a lot of competition in Portland. There's 50 or more uh, operating patient access points at this point. What's going to make Brightside stand out from the rest of them? I think what's going to make us stand out is just um, being a professionally professionally looking and a clean environment. I think that you know a lot of people, without you know pointing anybody out in Portland, I think that a lot of people associate clinics or not clinics, uh, medical marijuana dispensaries with kind of like still kind of shady back alley sort of deals. They look at like kind of sketched out smaller spots. This place is very large. It's very open. It's very um, it's welcoming. I think you walk in here and you. You know, we have very tall ceilings. I think you walk in and you kind of feel at home. It's very comforting. And I think that obviously we're priding ourselves on carrying the highest quality medicine. Everybody's going to say that, but we're going to have the lab tested 
um, results to show you that we do mean that and that, you know, all of our flowers, all of our edibles, all of our concentrates will be tested. Uh, we've been going through Sunrise Analytical here in, in uh, Portland. So I definitely think that we will be able to set ourselves apart by the fact that we're doing things in a way that, Oh, I guess this is another thing I should say. Well, there's no pot leaves on our building. I, I mean, saw that. Like, there's no the, there's no green. There's no green on our building. It looks we like have, it looks like an Apple store. Sure. I, I, know, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's definitely the feel that we want to have a very clean and professional environment. We don't want somebody to just drive by and say that's a medical marijuana dispensary. Right. I mean, obviously, we need people to know we're a dispensary so that we can get patients in here so they can get their medicine. But at the same time, we don't want to be you know having to flash pot leaves and green crosses everywhere out there to get our message across. We think we can be subtle, clean, and professional and still get people to, to understand that we, we mean business and we're here for the, for the patients. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, go ahead. I, I think the thing that really sets Bright Side apart from uh, coming from, I guess, my side job being a comic is that we are completely focused on not swooping up a market that's already there. We're trying to envelop an envelope of, of, of new people to the business, of taking advantage of uh, PTSD being comp encompassed in 3460, drawing in folks that are coming out of the closet because prohibition's kind of going away. The folks my parents' generation who, are, who use to medicate on a daily basis but are afraid to come out. And so I think we really are going to stand up by being more the quote-unquote suburban kind of draw. So mm. I also have to compliment you on your use of the heteronyms envelope and envelop in yeah. one <laughs> sentence. That was wonderful. We have a little game picking those out, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. All right, we're here at Brightside PDX, uh, Brightside PDX on uh, Facebook or in, on uh, Twitter and Instagram, Brightside period on, uh, on Facebook, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could go to the search thing and find Facebook, uh, uh, find Brightside on Facebook. You can also go to facebook.com slash Brightside PDX. So we are trying to keep it uniform. Brightside PDX pretty much on everything. Excellent. All right. And uh, folks, come down here. Remember the first five people that come in uh, to get their medicine, first five patients to get their medicine here, get a free Russ Belleville show pin, $15 value. Or if you're not in town, just go online to 420radio.org. Click on our shop. You can buy it from there. And I notice you guys have like T-shirts, and you're gonna have other stuff. Yeah, we definitely non-marijuana stuff. We have some bright side T-shirts. We're gonna have some other um, some other accessories. We'll have some pipes and some um, bongs and things like that. Things for people to be able to at least consume their medicine if they leave here. Some people, you know, might come here first time medical marijuana patient, first time ever going into a dispensary. You want to be able to, for someone to come in here and have everything necessary for them to go home and medicate for themselves and, you know, so they can be self-sufficient. So we'll definitely be carrying all of the accessories you can think of. We'll be carrying some local products from just stores around in town. We'll be partnering, partnering up with some local businesses in town and carrying some, uh, some local products that we think should be pushed. So definitely have a lot of things other than cannabis. All right, Calico Castile and Todd Armstrong for Brightside. Check them out. Thanks, guys, for stopping in. Thank you, Russ. Appreciate it. Come back. We'll have time for a radical rant on the top five pro pop myths. That the Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. So, Sarah, what's going on here? Sarah? Sarah? She won't answer you. Or she can't. Why not? This is the way it's been since she started smoking pot. She's all lazy and boring and... You know, we used to have so much fun together. And now? This is what we do. Cannabinoids and health. Cannabinoids. 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 Why am I having trouble saying that? Cannabinoids. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Cannabinoids. Oh, uh, what a gift. Play more, play more if you can. You looking for the dope weed? Fire it up. Play more, play more if you can. You looking for the dope weed? Booty boy the man. Play more, play more if you can. You looking for the dope weed? You want answers? 
I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Radical Rant. Welcome back, everybody, live from Bright Side here in 1010 Southeast Powell. And, <laughs> you know, I wrote this piece for High Times, and some of you know that I picked up a gig writing a daily article for High Times. Sometimes it appears in the news section if I'm covering a news story. Sometimes it's in the 101 section if I'm just covering a general interest article. And today, one of my articles got published that's entitled, and this is what High Times title. By the way, folks, sometimes uh, I'll, I'll supply a title to them, and they'll change the title. So it's not always up to me, the title. But the title they put in High Times today was Five Pro Pot Myths That Must Be Busted. And they put a picture of, the, of Jamie and what's his name, the Mythbusters, <laughs> to go along with it. And, uh, you know, I've been writing these articles for a while now, just about a month, and none has received as many comments as this one has, and some of them pretty critical comments. So uh, this is what happens when you cast a critical eye at the marijuana movement sometimes. You know, we're, we're so busy oftentimes debunking the nonsense that we get out of the other side, out of the opposition, uh, that we, you know, we fail to debunk some of the stuff that our side says. And that's what I wanted to do with this article. And I wrote, uh, here at High Times, we want marijuana legalization more than just about anyone. We also know the cannabis plant is a remarkable species that is so beneficial to mankind in so many ways, it's hard to count. But even though we know there have been conspiracies and lies designed to keep marijuana illegal, we do ourselves no favors by spreading our own conspiracies and untruths. In order to maintain our credibility, reformers ought to start debunking some of these cherished pro pot myths. And so here's the five uh, pro pop myths that I put forth that got a lot of rebuttal from people. Number one, debunked presidential quotes. Thomas Jefferson was not toking hemp on his back veranda. Abraham Lincoln wasn't smoking weed on the porch playing his honer harmonica. And Abraham Lincoln never declared prohibition will work great injury to the cause of temperance. These quotes have long been debunked, no matter what the totally baked DVD says. Now, the Founding Fathers' hemp quotes, though, those are totally legit. So that was the number one thing I came back, and, and a lot of people responded to that one. Uh, basically, uh, let's see if I can find this one. Uh, great job on debunking high times as a source for honest information. Thanks to your little article, including the insult to me, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So he wa there was no proof on this kind of stuff. And one of the people came back with all these quotes. Uh, here we go. Brian Gilmore uh, responded. Both Washington and Jefferson tried growing hemp on their Virginia farms with mixed success. Uh, Washington used some of what he grew to make hemp clothing, uh, blah, 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 blah. Not only were Washington and Jefferson marijuana farmers, they were unsuccessful marijuana farmers. Okay, this is where people get confused. Is like, if we were talking about a preponderance of the evidence as to whether or not Jefferson and Washington and Ben Franklin ever smoked cannabis for the pur purpose of getting euphoric, Maybe you could try to make that case. But the problem is we've got plenty of proof that they grew hemp. And we've got Jeff or Washington's diaries that said that he separated the male plants from the female plants. One of the reasons you might do that is to get females for smoking. But the other reason you might do that is to get males for seed or for hemp. So there's a lot of you know variation on that. And the scholars or the, the, the people that are in charge of the Washington uh, Museum George Washington's effects won't let anyone test his pipes to find out if he had had any blends. And there's reports of Jefferson and Washington exchanging smoking blends, different herbal blends. But to say that there's any definitive proof that they consumed cannabis, it's just not there in the way that we talk about smoking pot. Now, if you want to talk about presidents that smoke pot, uh, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Pierce, uh, we have uh, Zachary Taylor, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, they all smoke pot. We got Monroe from his time in France when, his ambassador, when he was uh, working out, the, uh, I think he was an ambassador to France at one point. 
But uh, anyway, uh, he used hashish out there. The other three, uh, Taylor and Jackson and Pierce, we have from their letters that they wrote back uh, during the Mexican Wars where they were serving in the military at that time, and they used to smoke marijuana with their uh, with their soldiers. In fact, uh, Franklin Pierce once wrote that the ma marijuana was the only good thing about the war. And we also have uh, biographies of John F. Kennedy that allude to his, or actually directly say, directly talk about his smoking joints uh, for back pain. And of course, Clinton and Obama and George W. Bush admitted their pot smoking. But as far as those debunked presidential quotes, the Honer Harmonica, the Prohibition one out of Lincoln, those are debunked. Please stop spreading them. Now, the number two thing that I added in my top five pro pot myths that must be busted was hemp will save the world. I hear this one all the time. Hemp will save the planet. Yes, yes. Hemp is an amazingly versatile plant for food, fuel, fiber, and medicine. But 31 countries already grow hemp. China grows hemp, right? It's just the United States banning it that dooms the earth. There's a lot of things that cause a lot of environmental degradation. When there's a hemp iPhone, hemp diamonds, and hemp cheeseburgers, then maybe hemp will replace everything that damages the environment. Now, I didn't get a lot of pushback from this, but a lot of people wanted to point out all the great things hemp will do and how hemp can be used as biodiesel, which is absolutely true. Problem is, you have to drive a diesel to use biodiesel. Sure, replacing all of our fleets of 18-wheelers and converting them to use biodiesel would do enormous good for the planet. But until everybody buys a diesel car, we're still going to have gasoline cars running around. So hemp is going to help a lot, but hemp will save the world is just is not just a little hyperbolic. Now the third one, <laughs> the third one is the one as I was writing it, I knew people would go up in arms about this and there'd be wailing and gnashing in teeth and hair on fire, and that is the pro pop myth that cannabis cures cancer. I hear this all the time, cannabis cures cancer. Now look, folks, we've seen THC kill cancer cells in Petri dishes, and many people will tell you that hemp oil cured their cancer. But all of those terms, cannabis cures cancer, all three of those words are much broader than what we can actually prove and what we actually know. First of all, Cancer is a very broad spectrum of diseases. There's lots of different cancers in lots of different stages. And cure is an absolute kind of a term. Cure means here's something that's, that's ailing you, and I'll give you this, and you will be miraculously healed permanently. For someone to be considered cured of cancer, it needs to be in remission for five years. And we just don't have people using the hemp oil long enough to verify that in a scientific way. Now, this is where people get mad because, oh, my cousin or my aunt or my brother or me, I use cannabis oil on my skin cancer or I use cannabis oil or whatever. You know, our own brave Michaela used cannabis oil and her leukemia is in remission. But we don't have the double-blind, peer-reviewed, you know, proof research to say cannabis cures cancer. And especially as cancer, like I said, is such a broad thing. I mean, if cannabis actually cured cancer, guaranteed 100%, then Michelle Rainey would still be alive. Our own Steve Veteran would still be alive. A lot of people who used cannabis oil to treat their cancer are dead now. Now, if we want to say cannabis kills cancer cells, that's accurate. If we want to say cannabis holds the promise to beneficial cancer therapies, that we can say. Even we can say many people have used cannabis oil and believe it has helped their cancer or cured their cancer. That's toe on the line, but it's still accurate. But to say as a blanket statement, cannabis cures cancer is as irresponsible as saying comedy cures depression. Now, yeah, laughter is good medicine. I can show you all sorts of studies that show people that are exposed to comedy, that are in a depressive state, will raise their mood, will lead to better outcomes. We can show you all that data. But it'd be irresponsible as hell for me to turn to a person who's clinically manic depressed and say, oh, all you need to do is go to the chuckle hut and tell them to ignore all the conventional talk therapies, psychotherapies, maybe even psychiatric drugs that could really and have been proven to help her. That's not to say I wouldn't tell her to go to the chuckle hut. 
It will definitely help her depression. It'll definitely help her feel better. Sure. Just as cancer, I would tell people, use cannabis oil. Absolutely use the cannabis oil. There's so much good it can do and so little harm it can cause. But to make a blanket statement that cannabis cures cancer and then to have people thinking all they need to do is take some oil and not see a doctor and not use the conventional chemotherapies or the conventional drugs that are out there, that just sounds a little too dangerous to me and something that we're just not yet ready to say. If we're going to bring, and Clint Werner, the author of Marijuana Gateway to Health, chimed in on the comments, and basically with the point that if we're reaching out to the medical professionals we need, we can't come at them with outlandish claims like cures. That sets off a thing in the doctor's head that says quack, that says snake oil. We need to show the promises there. We need to show the research must be done, absolutely. But let's do so accurately, and let's do so without exaggerating what cannabis is, is and isn't capable of at this point. All right, now the number four item that I added in the top five pro pop myths that must die, legalization will save money in law enforcement. <laughs> now, it's going to get me some... Uh, Give me some uh, angry people as well, but this is a stat where, and the way that's usually calculated, and I've done this, I've been as guilty as using this stat before, but the way that it works is it calculates, okay, how much money do we spend on cops and prisons and courts and so on? And then what percentage of arrests and prisoners and such are there for marijuana? And then divide the former by the latter. Right, like, okay, so we spend X million dollars divide by what percent of pot stuff is in there, and then that's how much it costs. Well, that's a very simplistic formula. It doesn't take into, a, into account a lot of things. Number one, police departments and bureaucracies don't spend their money on a item-by-item -item basis. It's not like they assigned cops and they say, all right, I want you to spend two hours arresting people for pot today. If the cop is no longer allowed to arrest people for pot, it's not like he's taking that two hours off every day and not getting paid for that two hours. That cop still is going to be working. Now, yes, he'll be catching people committing real crimes, and that's certainly something to be applauded, but we still have to pay us out. <laughs> and if we assume that rather than catching people that are, you know, uh, with a bag of weed, he's and then catch, catching real criminals, well, then all those expenses we allegedly save from housing the criminal who was the pothead are now going to be spent housing the real criminal, right? There will be some savings. There will be reductions in prison costs. There will be uh, reductions maybe in the, even the staffing that is necessary at a, at a police department. But trying to come up with some hard and fast figure that marijuana is going to save this month this much, to me, is almost always over and over. Now, music kicking in here as we get toward the end of the show. Number five, and I hope you guys can hear me over this, If you ain't got so bones, so you rock don't roll. If you ain't got so, so you rock don't roll. If you ain't got so bones, so you rock don't roll. So there you have it. That's my top five pro pop myths. Caused a little bit of controversy today. Check that out at hightimes.com. Also, High Times has given me permission to reprint my articles at radicalruts.com with a one week delay.
This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. Take a seat, you're planning, you're growing, you're trying to